Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media Cardiology Landmark Trials I am Dr Nick Nickam from Houston Texas In this series of cardiology landmark trials in this presentation we are going to look at EMPA reg outcomes trial So let us begin This was reported by Dr Bernard Zinman in uh, American Heart uh, Association journal they looked at uh, the effect of uh, empagliflozin on cardiovascular outcomes and mortality in type 2 diabetes patients a little bit of uh, pharmacology about uh, empagliflozin it is a sodium glucose cotransporter 2 inhibitor or commonly known as sglt2 inhibitor As you know SGLT2 promotes glucose absorption in the proximal tubule 90% of the glucose that is uh, filtered is reabsorbed in the proximal tubule by this uh, sodium glucose cotransporter and it is primarily used in patients for treatment of diabetes mellitus it interferes as i said the SGLT2 inhibitor it interferes with the glucose absorption in the proximal tubule along with the interference of the glucose absorption there is osmotic diuresis along with loss of sodium in the urine this drug reduces the hemoglobin a1c by a modest 0.6% it depletes intravascular volume to certain degree it may cause hypotension it also leads to weight loss and modest reduction of systolic and diastolic blood pressures and all of these uh, may have a positive effect in diabetics on cardiovascular morbidity and mortality we will see this study empareg outcomes looked at 7020 patients It was a multi-center randomized placebo controlled three arm study which involved empagliflozin 10 mg 25 mg and a placebo in patients with diabetes mellitus with underlying cardiovascular abnormalities it comprised of 72% of which were white 22% were Asians surprisingly There was no mention of Hispanics which have a very high incidence of diabetes mellitus and cardiovascular problems and only 4.5% of them were African Americans who also have a higher incidence of diabetes and cardiovascular problems but anyway let's continue the study duration was 3.1 years i wanted to keep all these numbers in mind the mean age was 28% were female uh, 57% uh, had diabetes of greater than 10 years myocardial infarction was noted in 47% of the patients coronary artery disease in 47 and 25% of them had coronary artery bypass surgery about 77% of these people were on statins that uh, doesn't explain why so many people were not on statins given the highest risk of uh, cardiovascular morbidity and mortality the features of the people who were enrolled in the study included adults with type 2 diabetes a bmi of less than 45 hemoglobin a1c ranging from 7 to 10% a glomerulofiltration rate of greater than 30 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square body surface and those with established cardiovascular problem 46% had heart failure 23% had cabbage as i said this was divided into three groups the empagliflozin was divided into two one with the 10 mg the other one with the 25 mg and the third arm was the placebo controlled group and here are some baseline characteristics of these patients and they were you know adequately treated for their diabetes with multiple medications including metformin sulfonylureas 
thiazolidine uh, drugs along with insulin i want to bring your attention to more importantly cardiovascular comorbidities in these patients my cardiac infarction was noted in 46% of the study group cabbage was noted in about 23 24% of 24 25% of the population uh, but heart failure at baseline was uh, approximately 10% um, and as i said uh, these patients were all on statins aspirin and renin angiotensin blockers um, primary outcomes they looked at three point major primary outcomes in these patients who were treated with uh, either placebo or empagliflozin and here are the results the three point outcome three point maze was noted in 10.5% of the empa group and 12.1% in the placebo group with a hazard ratio of 0.86 and a p value of 0.001 the most significant benefit was noted in cardiovascular related deaths in these uh, uh, patients in the empa group the mortality was 3.7% whereas in the placebo group it was 5.9% with a risk hazard ratio of 0.62 or a 32% improvement in cardiovascular deaths in this study with a p value of 001 this is a very important number and this is a significant number as we know diabetics are the highest risk for development of cardiovascular problems myocardial infarction and heart failure in this study surprisingly the incidence of a new myocardial infarction or stroke did not differ in the two groups let's keep this number in, in your mind for the time being the absolute reduction in cardiovascular deaths was 2.2 over a period of 3.1 years this is the number here and from this number you get a 2.2 percent absolute reduction that means for every 100 patient you treated there was a 2.2 lives saved let's keep that in number and we will use it towards the end of the presentation and if you look at the all cause mortality there was a substantial reduction in the all cause mortality not just cardiovascular mortality we are talking about all cause mortality and the hazard ratio was 0.68 heart failure admissions which is a major concern for every institution all across the country the heart failure admissions were 2.7% whereas 4.1% in the placebo group with a hazard ratio of 0.85 and a p value of 0.002 this is a, an important take home message from this study there was a modest decrease in hemoglobin a1c so let's proceed further and here are some of the same data presented in a different format three point maze was a hazard ratio of 0.86 the most benefit was noted in cardiovascular related deaths with a hazard ratio of 0.62 and non fatal myocardial infarction and non fatal strokes did not show significant benefit in the treatment group compared to the placebo group the secondary endpoints like heart failure admissions cardiovascular deaths all cause mortality and if there were any differences between empagliflozin 10 or 25 mg let's look at those uh, results and here is a heart failure hospitalization or cardiovascular death there was a clear improvement in patients treated with empagliflozin compared to the placebo group similarly heart failure hospitalization and cardiovascular death there was a substantial improvement in the group that was treated with 10 mg of empagliflozin versus 25 mg so there was no difference between the two different dosages 10 mg was as effective as the 25 mg empagliflozin 
Let's look at hospitalization or death from heart failure. Again, there was a significant improvement in these patients at the end of four years. The newly discovered heart failure patients also fared fairly well in terms of reduced instances. The hemoglobin A1c decreased by approximately 0.6%. And it, it was not much different between the two dosage groups. There was a modest weight reduction of approximately 2 to 3 pounds. And it was uh, noted in the treatment arm compared to the placebo. Similarly, there was a drop in the systolic blood pressure by about uh, 4 to 5 millimeters of mercury and a diastolic blood pressure by about 3 to 4 millimeters of mercury in the treatment group and also in the placebo group. I don't know how the placebo group kept up with a reduction, maybe just better follow up of these patients because they are enrolled in the study. All right, they looked at the outcomes in patients with prior myocardial infarction or stroke with the patients who did not have cardiovascular problems to begin with. So if you start off with the diabetic patients with pre-existing coronary artery disease in the form of myocardial infarction, coronary artery bypass surgery or heart failure, and you treat these patients, they had a substantially better outcomes compared to those who did not have cardiovascular comorbid conditions at the beginning of the study and we'll look at other slides which will show uh, equally important study. So the all-cause mortality was much less in patients with prior myocardial in infarction or stroke. Similarly, cardiovascular deaths, three-point maze, uh, hospitalizations and hospitalizations for heart failure and death, they were all better in patients with pre-existing cardiovascular morbidities like heart failure, bypass surgery, myocardial infarctions. And here, it did not make any difference as far as the age is concerned, kidney function is concerned, whether they were on insulin or not, whether they were on ACE inhibitors or not, whether they were taking diuretics or not, whether they were on beta blockers or not. In every group, there was a favorable result in hazard ratio compared to the placebo group. It it favored the empoglyphosin group. All cause hospitalizations were also reduced in this study. And in this study, we can see heart failure, hospitalizations, or cardiovascular deaths in patients with history of heart failure at baseline or not. And clearly, if they didn't have heart failure to begin with, still the empoglyphosin group fared better in terms of uh, heart failure, hospitalization, and cardiovascular deaths in both groups. Outcomes in patients with or without heart failure at baseline. Again, it did not make any difference whether they had cardiovascular problems or not. Even those who did not have cardiovascular problems to begin with, they all showed favorable results. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, empaglyphosin reduces all-cause mortality. And in particular, it reduces cardiovascular mortality. Certainly, it reduces hospitalizations for heart failure in patients with diabetes. It had a modest reduction in hemoglobin A1c by 0.6%. They also, it also had modest lowering of systolic and diastolic blood pressure. In addition to these, the empaglyphosin may have additional metabolic functions which may be accounting for some of the improvement in cardiovascular functions. One of the theories put forward is the, the increase in ketones, which may improve the myocardial performance, and all these things need to be established by further studies. Let's 
look at this number again cardiovascular deaths absolute reduction was 2.2 percent so for every 100 patients that was treated with empagliflozin there was a 2.2 percent reduction in mortality that means for every 100 patient that was treated you saved 2.2 lives but if you look at the cost of this drug this is just from today the retail cost is approximately $600 and with the best coupon that you can get from discount stores, 504 Unless you have a very robust prescription plan and if you are paying cash, it's going to cost you $6,000 per year for treatment with empagliflozin. And if you take $6,000 for three years, because the mortality is spread over three years, so that's $18,000. And if you're talking about 100 patients to save 2.2 lives, the cost of saving 2.2 lives will be approximately $1.8 million. It may not make any sense being a scientist, being a clinician, being a, a healer of human suffering. Cost should not be an issue. But in this day of modern medicine, everything matters. When you are dealing with HMOs, when you are dealing with corporations running medicine, all these things come into account. So ladies and gentlemen, this is an overview of the EMPA reg outcomes. This is Dr. Nick Nickum and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch other cardiology landmark trials on our channel. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.